Hey there, Louis Akabalas here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create dashboards in ServiceNow. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can create a dashboard in ServiceNow and we're going to look at how you can add different types of widgets to your dashboard. Now, widgets in ServiceNow include reports, lists of records from different tables, and even things like iframes that allow you to bring in external content, such as a website. You can actually embed a website on a dashboard. Then we're going to go ahead and look at how you can add tabs to your dashboard. And then we're going to close out the tutorial by looking at how you can actually share your dashboard. So let's go ahead, let's check it out. All right, now to create a dashboard, the first thing that you want to do is type dashboard in the filter navigator. Next, you want to click on dashboards under self-service. This is going to bring you into the dashboards menu where you can see a list of all of the dashboards that you have access to. Now you can see here that by default, you land on the recent tab and these represent dashboards that you recently accessed. If you wanted to look at dashboards that you own, you can click on the Owned by Me tab, and this is going to display a list of all the dashboards where you are cited as the owner. If you wanted to see dashboards that were shared by others with you, you can click on Shared With Me, and if, again, you want to see all of them, you can just click on the All tab. Now, you can also quickly filter by groups, or you can just search for dashboards in the search field. Now to create a new dashboard, you wanna click on the new button. And this is going to bring you into the new record menu for dashboards. Now first you want to give your dashboard a name. So I am going to call this incident tracking dashboard. Next, you want to select an owner for your dashboard. Now, by default, it is just going to populate with yourself as the owner. If you wanted to change this, you could search for and select a different user. Now, I will just go ahead and set this back to system administrator, and this way I will be the owner of this dashboard. Now, you want to make sure that the active is checked, and you'll notice that this was checked by default. This is just going to ensure that this dashboard is active and you'll be able to see it. And if you wanted to restrict this dashboard to specific security roles in ServiceNow, you can check this pencil icon, and this is going to bring up a list of all of the roles that exist in your ServiceNow instance. You could just go ahead and drag and drop those roles into the selected pane in order for you to tie this dashboard to specific roles. Now, we're not going to do that in this tutorial, so I am just going to remove that role that I had selected and X out of this menu. Next, you want to go ahead and click Submit. And this is going to bring you into your dashboard record, and you'll see here that this is just an empty dashboard. There is no content on it as of yet. And so we're gonna go ahead now and we're going to add a bunch of reports and widgets to this dashboard. All right, now the first thing that we're going to look at is how to add widgets or reports to your dashboard. Now to add elements to your dashboard, what you want to do is you wanna click on this Add Widgets button. And this is going to bring up a menu here where you can actually sort through different types of widgets and then select a widget and add it to your dashboard. Now, if you click into the widget category, this is going to display a list of the different types of widgets. So you can see that you can access things that you've bookmarked as your favorites. You can see that you can access reports, performance analytics, uh, you know, generic content blocks, etc. So you can just scan through this list and you can see all of the different elements or categories of widgets that you can add to your dashboard. Now to get started, I am going to click on the reports category and this is going to bring up a list of reports that I have access to. 
either reports I've created or reports that have been shared with me. Now you can also search for a specific report that perhaps you've created that you want to add to your dashboard. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to scroll down and click on this report that is titled Incident by Status. Now you can see here it is going to preview the report and to add this report to your dashboard you want to click on the Add button. And you can see here that it has added the report to your dashboard. Now, before I get into customizing the appearance or the layout of the dashboard, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of my reports to this dashboard, and then we're gonna look at how to kind of rearrange or customize the layout to meet your specific needs. Now, to add another widget, you wanna click on the back button. And again, this time I'm going to scroll down and click on my incidents by assignment group report. And I'm going to click on add. And you can see here that it has added this report to my dashboard. And again, I'll click on the back button. And this time I'm going to add my incident by contact type report to the dashboard. And I'm gonna click add. And you can see that that one has been added too. Now, a very important note, if you're interested in learning how I created these reports in ServiceNow, I do have a tutorial that walks through how to create reports in ServiceNow. You can click that link in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, and that's going to take you to that video. Bookmark it, save it, add it to a playlist, watch it after this tutorial, and you'll be able to create the same types of reports that you're seeing here on the dashboard. Now, what I'm going to show you next is how to actually configure the layout of your dashboard. Now, very quickly, if you click on the configuration button at the top of the interface here, this is going to bring up a layout configuration menu. Now you can see at the very bottom of this menu, you have what are called quick layouts. And these are essentially pre-built layouts that if you click on, it's automatically going to rearrange your dashboard. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this four by four grid. And you can see here, as soon as I do that, my dashboard is going to be rearranged to meet that specific layout design. Now, if I go ahead and click on this three by three grid, again, you're going to see that my reports automatically format themselves or resize themselves to suit that layout. So that is one way that you can go ahead and customize the layout of your dashboard. Now, before I show you how you can actually take it a step further and resize these elements, I will also call your attention to this dashboard background. So by default, you can see that the background of this dashboard is white. If you wanna change the color of the background, you can just click on this color picker and then you can go ahead and actually just uh, select a custom color. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this dark blue here. Now you could also put in a specific hex code for a color if you wanted to. And again, it's just going to update in real time. Now I'm gonna close out of this configuration menu. And so again, you can see as you resize your browser window, as you move elements around, the dashboard is actually going to expand uh, and shrink the different elements to kind of fit the space that you have on your screen, which is really handy. So we looked at how to use the quick layouts. Now, maybe you wanna customize your dashboard to meet your own kind of design requirements. And if you wanna do that, what's really cool about these dashboards is that you can actually just rearrange them by dragging and dropping your dashboard. Now, you'll notice that I can't do it right now. And the reason for that is that I have to click back into the configuration menu. So once I open this menu, you'll actually notice that as I place my cursor at the very top of these reports, you're going to see some additional icons so you can see here the up down arrow which is increase height decrease height and if i click that i can just quickly um, you know change the size of this you'll see here this edit content button which if i click on that it's actually going to bring me into that specific report so that i could update that report if i needed to you can refresh these widgets at any point in time by clicking the refresh button and then there's some specific settings that you can configure, which we're gonna look at a bit later. Now, once I've opened this configuration menu, what's really cool is that you can actually just resize these reports or these widgets um, just by dragging 
them as if you would, you know, a browser window, for example, or an app on your desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place my cursor at the very top of this incidents by assignment group report, and I'm going to drag this down. And now I'm going to just kind of rearrange this dashboard uh, to fit my specific requirements. So perhaps I want to make these reports a little bit bigger. I can just resize them by placing my cursor on the edge of either of them. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to actually change some of the settings for each of these different report widgets. Now to do this, you wanna place your cursor at the very top of the report and you can see here how it kind of brings up this header and you want to go ahead and click on the edit widget button, which is the gear icon. And this is gonna bring up a context-based menu. So it will always look a little bit different depending on the type of the report. But you can see here that you have some options about the appearance of that widget. So I can check whether I want a border and a header and a title to be displayed. So I'll just go ahead and uncheck border and title and I'll click done. And you can see here that this widget has kind of updated to reflect those changes. Now I'll just go ahead and add these both back and you have other options like changing the alignment of your title. So by default, it's set to left. I can go ahead and change this to center or right. And you'll also notice that you have the option to change things like your title color and your header color. So if I wanted to change that, I could just click into the color picker. So these are some different options that you have with respect to customizing uh, the specific widgets. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the edit widget button for my incident by status. And this is going to bring up this menu again. Now, what I'm gonna draw your attention to is this last option here that says interactivity. Now, you'll notice that there's two options here. One reads act as interactive filter and the other is follow interactive filter. Now, essentially what an interactive filter is in the context of a dashboard is when you set one of these widgets to be an interactive filter, that means that it can act as a quick filter and it can automatically filter the other widgets that are displayed on your dashboard, provided that you actually set them to follow interactive filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this for my incidents by status. And I'm also just going to set the title to center and I'm gonna click done. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click into each of these widgets and I'm going to check this option that says follow interactive filter. And I'm also gonna check show when following filter. That's important because that's just going to actually tell you that that report is following the interactive filter when we drill down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click done and I'm gonna do the same thing for my other widgets. So I'm gonna click follow interactive filter, show when following filter, and then I'm gonna do that for this last option here, act as interactive filter. I'm not gonna check that. I'm just gonna check follow interactive and show when following filter. And I'm gonna go ahead and click done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close out of my configuration here and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I set my incident by status report to be my interactive filter. Now, if I go ahead and click on one of these options in this pie chart. For example, if I click on in progress, I want you to pay attention to what is going to happen to these other reports. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And you can see here that these reports updated and essentially what they've done is they've now been filtered to only show that data pertaining to incidents that are in the status of in progress. So you can see here that the number's reduced now, if I wanna remove that interactive filter, I can just click on in progress again, and that's just going to return these to the default. And if I wanted to perhaps filter these reports to show me only the data pertaining to closed incidents, I can go ahead and click on closed. And again, you're going to see that those reports updated in real time. So interactive filters are a really cool way for you to add um, some dynamic elements to reports to widgets that you've added to your dashboard so you can quickly drill down into some specific uh, you know data or a subset of data that you're looking for
All right, now the next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can add a few other interesting widgets to dashboards. Now specifically, one of the widgets that I find very useful is the iframe widget. In order to add widgets to your dashboard, again, you wanna click on the plus sign, which is the add widgets button. And I'm gonna click back here. And in the widget category, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click into the content blocks group. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on the new iframe. Now an iframe essentially allows you to display another website within an embedded inline frame or a widget. So that's what we're going to look at. Pretty useful if you want to try to bring in some external data into your dashboards. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. And you can see here that it's now placed this iframe on my dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and click click here in order to actually set this iframe to point to a specific website. And here you want to go ahead and give your iframe a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to point this to a website that monitors outages of common you know, software services. So I'm going to just call this one outage tracker. And I am going to click into my URL field. And this is where you actually want to paste in the URL for that external website. Now you can also give your frame a name. This way, if you wanna reuse it in other dashboards, you can go ahead and find it easily. And the other options here are with respect to the sizing. So you can either set this to a fixed size or expand to fit content, but you'll notice that that only applies to internal content, which means internal elements in ServiceNow. So I'll go ahead and set this to fixed size, and I'm just gonna make the width a little bit bigger because we're gonna make this uh, larger in the context of our dashboard. So I'm gonna set the width to 800, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. And you can see here that this outage tracker iframe has now been placed at the very top of my dashboard. And if I scroll down here, this is essentially displaying information from that URL. So these iframes are pretty handy for you to be able to pull in external information. Now, very important note, I have experienced scenarios where ServiceNow administrators have disabled iframes, uh, and that might be for security reasons. So if you can't find the iframe widget in your list, you wanna to talk to your ServiceNow administrator and find out if that's been intentionally disabled. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to add tabs to your dashboard. So you can actually add multiple tabs to a dashboard to help you layer or display different types of information on different screens or pages, if you will. Now, to add a tab to a dashboard, you wanna click into the configuration menu and you can see here this option that says create tab. So you wanna go ahead and click on this. And you can see here that this has now added a new tab at the top of your dashboard. Now, if I wanted to get back into my primary tab, I can just go ahead and click on this. And you'll also notice that when I click on a tab, I have the option to edit the tab and to delete it. So if you wanna delete a tab, just click on the delete button. And if you wanna edit it, you can click on this pencil icon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit the title of this tab. So I'm just gonna call this incident tracking charts. Okay, and to commit that, just click off of it. So you can see here that that primary tab has been renamed. And I'm also going to edit the name of this tab to call this incident tracking list. And I'm gonna click off of it to add a tab. So that's how you can add a tab. Now very quickly, when you're working with additional tabs, they function the exact same as we saw earlier in the tutorial. So if I wanna just add a report to a tab or another widget, I just follow the same steps. I can just select it and click add, and it's just going to go ahead and add that to my tab. So that is how you can add tabs to a dashboard. Now, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to add uh, a list to this tab. So I'm gonna grab my all incidents list and I'm gonna click add. And I'm just going to go ahead and resize this here and I'll close the configuration menu. So this is an example of where it might be useful to add additional tabs to a dashboard. Maybe you have a tab that sort of presents summary level information in the form of charts. And then if you wanted to do a deep dive on any of the data, for example, you might add a separate tab to show the list of records and actually 
uh, allow you to click into records right from this list. So that is how to add tabs to a dashboard. We're gonna end off the tutorial by looking at how to share a dashboard. All right, now to share a dashboard, what you want to do is navigate to your dashboard and you want to click on the sharing button here. This is going to bring up the share menu. And as we saw a little bit earlier in the tutorial when we created the dashboard, we can actually share them with groups, with individual users or with roles specifically. Now to share a dashboard with any of these elements, you wanna go ahead and click on the plus sign. And here it's asking you to go ahead and add your recipient. So if you wanted to share it with an individual, for example, you could just start typing. So I'm just gonna start typing and you can see here that it is going to bring up a list of users as well as groups. So you can see, I can see individual users. And if I scroll down, it's also going to show me assignment groups uh, or roles that exist in the system. So you can just select any one of these uh, in order to share this dashboard with, again, a user, a group, or a role. Now, if you are sharing a dashboard with a group or a role, essentially what that means is that any user that's a member of that group or any user that has that role that you're sharing the dashboard with is going to inherit access to this dashboard. Now you'll also notice at the bottom of this list, there is a permission option. So you can see it says recipients and by default it's set to view. Now, if you share this dashboard with view only permissions, that means that your users will only be able to view the dashboard and the data that's presented on it. Uh, they won't be able to modify the dashboard in any way. Now, if you do want to permit users to be able to modify the dashboard, then you wanna go ahead and select edit. And this is going to allow them to actually change the layout, add widgets, remove widgets, just as we saw. Now, before I go ahead and share this, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration showing what it looks like when a user is trying to access a dashboard when they don't have access, then I'll go ahead and share it and then I'll go back and do the same thing. All right, now I am impersonating a user named Abraham Lincoln and I'm gonna go ahead and type dashboards and I'm gonna select dashboards under the self-service group. And you can see here that this user does not have access to any dashboards. So I'll just click through the different tabs, including all. And you can see here that this user doesn't have access to the dashboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share the dashboard with this user. And then we're gonna come back here and look at what it looks like when the user has been given access. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and I've created an invitation to access this dashboard. So you can see here, I've added the user in the to field. You can see here that you also have the option to send an email invitation. You can input a message and then I've set my sharing permission to edit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click share. And you can see here this prompt that says one user was invited. And you'll also notice that now in the share menu, you can easily see who has access to this dashboard and what their permission levels are. Now let's go ahead and let's look at what it looks like when the user is trying to access the dashboard. All right, now you can see that I'm impersonating my user here and you can see now that the incident tracking dashboard appears in the list of dashboards that they have access to. I'm gonna go ahead and click into this. And you can see here that while the user has access to this dashboard, they actually can't see some of these specific reports that had been developed. So that's a really important note that when you're developing reports, you wanna make sure that you set those reports to public. If they're private, then you might end up in a situation where your users are going to get this message that says the report is visible only to a specific user or a group. Uh, and they're not actually gonna be able to see this. So something else that you wanna keep in mind. All right, now very quickly before I close out this tutorial, what I've done here is I've navigated into one of the reports that I added to the dashboard. I wanna demonstrate how you can set a report to be visible to everyone. Now from this screen, what you want to do is you wanna go ahead and click on the sharing button and you wanna click on share. And you can see here that it says that this report is currently set to be visible to only me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change this to everyone and I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm gonna click on the save button. Now when we navigate back to the dashboard as our user, we're going to see that that user will be able to actually see that report on the dashboard. Now I will quickly just impersonate our user again and I will click on my history and just quickly navigate back to that dashboard. 
And you can see here that the incident by status report that we just set to be visible to everyone is now visible. And you can see that those other reports are still not visible because we haven't made that change to those reports. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how you could create dashboards in ServiceNow. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below. If you want to help me out, please share this tutorial with your friends, with your colleagues, or anyone else who might find it useful. And most importantly, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acobellis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.